This video is presented to you by Physics for Students. To know more, please visit us at physicsforstudents.com. Now, in the earlier video, what we have seen is that we just went through the basic introduction of Maxwell's equations. We have seen uh, the different components of Maxwell's equations. I've given the link of the first video in the I button. So if you have missed the first video, which is most important, starting with the introduction part, I would request you to please look onto that. Now, the second, this video primarily deals with the component which is called electric field. Now, if we talk of the field theory, uh, which has its origin in the 18th century in a mathematical formulation of Newtonian mechanics, but it was not formalized in 1852, Michael Faraday treated the magnetic fields as a physical object reasoning about lines of force. James Clerk Maxwell used Faraday's conceptualization to help formulate his unification of electricity and magnetism in his electromagnetic theory. Now, if you see this part of the equation, which is the Gauss's form uh, integral form, so this one, which is goes with the vector, it's this is the electrical field. So this is the electric field, and this is what we are going to deal and with other certain other components over here. Now, first of all, let us understand what is an electric field. Now, I have given several definitions over here. Don't get bogged down by all those definitions. These are all correct. These are all different parts of the definition. So you can go through it, but we will go forward and stick to one uh, particular um, uh, definition. So the first one is a composition or union of magnetic polarization. It says the second one, an electric field is a fundamental natural phenomena that emanates from atomic charge and subatomic particles and the electric field can be a convergence of electric influence gathered from an unlimited encirclement of charge hosting bodies even vastly remote. Further, we can find several other definitions of electric field among that and the important is that it surrounds electrically charged particles and exerts force on all other charged particles in the field either attracting or repelling them. The field or space around charged particle where its force can be experienced. So these are all different definitions of electric field. Now this is a basically a kind of a visual visualization where you can see a positive and a negative charge. So what we can tell is that an electrical field is the electrical force per unit charge exerted on a charged object. So that sounds impressive and that sounds comprehensive rather than going through those long definitions. So this one, as you can see, denotes the electrical force in this equation and this one is the small charge. Right. So we take a kind of a small charge just in order to denote a kind of an experiment for a physical phenomena. So that is why we consider this to be charm, small charge. So however, this is what is called an electrical field is a force per unit charge exerted on a charge object. Now, if you go to this in physics and uh, in, okay, so firstly, let us look into this. So this is reminds it is a vector quantity right uh, with magnitude uh, which is proportional to force okay this one we see this is the electrical force in terms of newtons and this is charge in coulombs okay so it has units of newtons per coulomb uh, this should be coulomb i'm so sorry for the uh, spelling mistake which is the same as volt uh, uh, vm as volts equals to newtons meter and coulombs now one thing is important that in physics there is something which is called a Lorentz force, right? And it's the combination of electric and magnetic force on a point charge due to electromagnetic fields. Now, particle of a uh, charge, this one Q, uh, for example, moving with velocity, this one V, in the presence of an electric field, this one E, and a magnetic field, this one B experiences a force right so the Lorentz force you can think is the combination of electric and magnetic force on a point charge due to electromagnetic fields most importantly some people tells that the law is implicit in a paper by James Kirk Maxwell published in 1865 Henry Cantor Lorentz arrived at a complete derivation in 1895 identifying the contribution of the electric force for a few years after 
Oliver Heaviside correctly identified the contribution of the magnetic force. So Lorentz force is something which is very important. Uh, we are not dealing with Lorentz force currently uh, out of the sco uh, scope of this video, but this is a scope which is a combination of electric and magnetic fields and I've shown uh, with the red circles what each of those components mean. So you see there's a, if there's a positive point charge the electric fields or the lines are radially pointing outwards negative point charge the uh, the electric fields are radially pointing inwards this is a positive uh, you know charge conducting sphere this is positively charged conducting sphere and this is an infinite plane of negative charge so these are all you know point charges or different types of electric fields carried out in different surfaces well, we will come to those surfaces once we study what is a Gaussian surface and what is called an open and closed surface in due course of time. But this is just to give you a pictorial un uh, understanding of what these ch charges and what they look like. Now, one thing is important is that electric fields, they originate on a positive charge and terminate to a negative charge. The net electric field at point P, for example, I'm not showing this derivation, is the vector sum of electric fields of E1 and E2, where these lines uh, have come to a final calculation. So these are vector sums of E1 and E2. Now, also important is that electric field is a virtual line and a tangent and any point in the field uh, indicates the direction of electric field. So most important is that electric fields are always okay. So before going to that, you should remember that electric fields, they never intersect each other. So if two lines intersect at any point, then two tangents can be drawn at one point, which indicates two directions of electric field and which is not possible. Because at any point there is n only one direction of the field and that is the reason that they never cross each other. So on the left hand side I've just given that cross just to denote that electric field lines are not crossing each other. So this is a kind of a very important thing and lastly electric field lines are always perpendicular to the conductor. So if you have seen this is the blue one which is a good conductor and it is always perpendicular to the conductor. Few important points to know uh, about the properties of how electric Electric fields behave. Now, <clears throat> what exactly does this E, you know, this part uh, in Gauss's law, they represent? So, this is actually what is called the total electric field at each point on the surface. This is the total electric field on each point of the surface. This is, uh, I would say literally it means this, but symbolically we denote this as the total electric field on the surface. Now, most importantly is that we again come to the dot product part, right? Now, before we go into this dot product, what I would like to tell you is this one and this one are not the same. So let us not get uh, confused. I have uh, shown this in my video on mathematical symbols where I traced back to the origin of symbols plus minus addition multiplication. I have made a comprehensive video of around 45 minutes on the historical significance of that. So do not comp uh, confuse the DOS product with this circle. Because this circle, if you're using your MS word or otherwise, this is a composite function. So a composite function is different and this is different. So let us not get confused with this. Okay. So in Gauss's law, the this one is the electric field uh, the circle represents the dot product between the electric field vector E and the normal uh, uh, vector that is the hat N. And if you, so this is the unit normal ve vector and this is the electric field. In between you see the dot which is called the dot product, not to be confused with the composite function sign. And if you know the angle between them, so you can calculate. So uh, for example, we take the Cartesian components of each vector x, y, and z. And if you know the angles, then we can calculate this one, right? So this is something which is typically, uh, I would say, uh, this is something very typical to Cartesian coordinates of finding out a dot product. Now, for, for example, let us consider the vectors A and B and the differ in angle. Now you see that is the angle theta as shown uh, here. So for these vectors, uh, the projection of A on to B is shown here and it is multiplied. This projection, multiplying this projection of the length B gives AB cos theta. 
right so the dot product represents a projection of a onto b i'm repeating this concept so as to make you clear that y galser's law although i have covered earlier has a dot product so the dot product represents a projection of a onto the direction b multiplied by the length of b so we are multiplying the length of b but the projection is of a onto b Okay, so what is called a unique normal vector, which is represented by this sign, which is an arrow. Okay, fine. So we, if we know that a vector with a magnitude 1, so for example, this is a vector and this is has got a magnitude which is 1. A ve vector with magnitude 1 that is perpendicular to the curve at some point. So the concept of the unit normal vector is pretty straightforward. At any point of surface, imagine a vector with length of 1 pointing in the direction perpendicular to the surface. Right? Imagine a vector of length 1 uh, pointing in the direction perpendicular to the surface. Such a vector which is labeled as n or whatever you call that hat on the top is called a unique vector because its length is unique and normal because it is perpendicular to the surface. So you see I have drawn a length which is uh, perpendicular to the surface. Now for example if I get something like a kind of a sphere right this one and all this spreads radially outside Right. So this expression represents a component of the electric field that is perpendicular to the surface under consideration. Now, let us not uh, let us recall that the dot product between the two vectors such as E and N is simply the projection of the first onto the second multiplied by the length. So you uh, so this is uh, what is the definition of the length unit. It, it is unit normal one. So this one and this one are more or less the same. Right. Why it is the same? Because if I omit the normal vector that is n with a hat on the top, then it signifies 1. So if I consider when I'm differentiating with dA, so n with a hat on the top dA and without writing n with a hat on dA, this is more or less the same. This is more or less the same, right? So we, we can say that this n with a hat on the top and dA and this is the same. Now this sphere which you see on the right hand side of the screen and the uh, uh, and the uh, vectors which are, the arrows which are pointing outwards these are all unit vectors and in general for a surface in order to avoid and by convention these are all pointing outwards we will come when we deal with the surface charge and these things will become clear now what we see is that you see this this component which is uh, uh, this is this is the component of the electric field perpendicular to the surface and I have just shown with another that dot product between two vectors is just a projection of the first onto the second multiplied the length of the second which you see and uh, below you will see in blue uh, box this is the earlier uh, uh, you know uh, uh, figure where the a and b are the two vectors theta being the angle here n equals to one so this one equals to one and it comes to e cos theta right so we'll so th this is why so this is the component of electric field we are, and this is the reason that we are using the uh, uh, we are using the uh, 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 we, we are using this dot product for this reason now for example this is a surface like components of e normal to the surface is e n now if for example so this is n right and this is e now, if we can uh, say something that theta is 90 degrees, right, and E is perpendicular to N, then uh, this comes, E dot N equals to this, which is 0. So, in this case, the uh, it, it comes. So, next we think that uh, in the case that a component of E is perpendicular surface is 0. If theta is 0, 0 degree, for example, and E is parallel to N, then this becomes the case. So, in the case, the component of E perpendicular to the surface is the entire length of N. So, you see, I marked it in uh, red and it is the entire length of E, right? So, we have taken two cases, as you see. We have taken theta, which is equals to 90 degree. The value of E dot N comes to 0. And when you have the taken the theta equals to 0 degree, it comes to this value. And E is perpendicular to the surface is the entire length of E. 
So that's all. So uh, kind of a quick uh, summary on what we learned in this video. We have learned what is an electric field, what is a dot product and why Gauss's law uses dot product. And obviously we have learned what is the unit normal vector. Now you see we are going part by part. If you again go back to your uh, equation, you will see that what we have co covered is the components in part one. In this part, we are covering what is an electric field, what is that n hat and what is a dot product. Coming up in the next video, we are going to look forward what is a surface integral, what is flux of a vector field and what do we mean by electric field through a closed surface. So if you have watched my this video and my earlier video, everywhere I have we have uh, spoken about electric field through a closed surface. So what do we mean by closed surface and what is the surface integral we need to understand and what is the flux of a vector field. So let me know uh, how do you like this video. Do like and comment and subscribe for the channel and do let me know how this uh, series is going. I'm trying to get a very easy approach to the entire uh, concept of Maxwell's equations part by part. So let me know how do you like it and I will be waiting for your feedback. Have a nice day and uh, have a great weekend ahead. Bye.